If I were to tell someone something about, man, what you doing today? Oh, let's just hang out, let's just chill. Just, just throw time away. Yes. You know, just take it, ball it up, throw it away. But if you say, hey, here, man, I'm gonna write you a check for $86,400, but go give some away. Man, I'm not giving none of this away. Right. Because it's 86,400 seconds in a day. But when they, the moment you slap money on it, people get stingy with it. But when you slap seconds on it, they just throw it away. Not, re not recognizing that time is the most significant thing because ultimately that's what you get paid for. But once you really tap into, like I noticed with those two hours and 40 minutes a day is the minimum. I want people to go more. Once you really tap into that time, you transcend time. Like I'll use Kobe Bryant for an example. I was studying his salary. He got a balloon payment though. I think he was getting somewhat of almost thirty, fifty thousand dollars a game. I might be misquoting it. He's transcended time because 48 minutes don't equal fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> but he's invested so much into his ability to shoot the basketball, be a leader, every element of his game, that at a certain point you're getting paid for time. But when you keep working at your talent, you transcend time. Look at Beyonce, look at Jay-Z, look at Bill Gates. Look at these people who now, because of what they've created, they have now transcended time. That you pay them for something that's beyond their time, beyond the service, beyond the product, because of what they've invested into it. So I kept thinking about what if I kept investing into me on that level. Day after day after day after day into the talent God gave me. Give that back to him. My minimum is two hours and 40 minutes. My max is whatever. Some days it might be 10 hours. <laughs> Then you transcend time and money att is attracted to your level of talent. Mm. <laughs> you know, so I always say passion without pursuit is painful. That whenever you're passionate about something you don't pursue, it becomes painful that you begin to be envious of people who are doing what you're passionate about. Yes. But passion with pursuit is profitable. Because at a certain point, if you're passionate about something you continue to pursue, you can't help but then get results from it, which ends up being money. <laughs> you know, yeah. so th that would be my advice to anybody about what I call win the day. Anybody can start anything, but pe people struggle with the ability to consistently keep going. You know, it, you can start today and say you're going to work out in six weeks time out, but who can consistently for a lifetime maintain that? <laughs> that's what, that's win the day, that's day after day being consistent, doing the same thing, biting off the same regimen over and over and over again. That's what relationships are built on, consistency. You know, that's, that's what success is built on, consistency. I would say st stats are built on consistency. If LeBron scored eight points a game, the world would talk about it because he has consistently showed you he can do better than that. So the moment you consistently prove what you can, what you can offer, everybody expects that from you, and now you have to challenge yourself to either maintain or to exceed your expectation of your own consistency. In the bar to that level where people now expect you to exceed on a higher level, how do you deal with the pressure that comes with being able to maintain that? Man, I, I really think that the greatest thing you ever do is learn to hear the volume of your own voice. What I mean by that is, I'll, I'll tell you a story and that'll answer it. There was this guy that was in an arena and he had just spoke, his, his life dream was to speak in front of a crowd of 100,000 people. He spoke and the crowd is on their feet, everyone screaming, but to humble himself, he decided I won't take a limo, I won't take you know, the private car service, I'm gonna go for a walk down the block. First block he got to, there was a lady that walked up to him and was screaming, oh my God, you're the greatest speaker to ever come alive, you, you're Jesus himself. You know, she gave him all these high compliments, you're this, you're that, you're Martin Luther King, you're the greatest speaker to ever speak. He said, thank you so much, and just kept walking. He got to the very next block and this woman started cursing him out, telling him, you're the worst person I ever heard, you're a crook, you're this, you're feeding those people with all that false hope, you know, you're the devil himself, you know. He said, well, thank you so much, and he just kept walking. The overall moral of the story is you're never as good as they say you are, you're never as bad as they say you are. What matters is why he decided to take that walk is what kept him grounded. So. I say that to say you have to learn most people hear so much advice from outside things that they never hear their own voice. So remembering why you got started, remembering what pushes you, what inspires you, or what I like to say is who was your moment of inspiration? Because if you can remember the thing that got you started, the thing, the process, you know when you think about millionaires don't talk about the millions, they talk about the process to get there. <laughs> a woman on her wedding day isn't crying about that moment, she's crying about the process to get there. So if you can remember your process, you can stay grounded no matter what level you're at and continue to challenge yourself to, go, to, to accomplish what is your end goal, not just a moment of fame.